Let's now see what happens if we use the diff reader object instead of the reader object. The import and open statement are the same as before. And likewise, we instantiate a diff reader object just like we did with the reader object. We can ask what kind of object it is. Then we can step through or iterate through each of the items in that reader object and assign them to an iterated object. That iterated object is going to be a dictionary. And that dictionary has keys that are formed from the column headers and values that are formed from the value of the cell in each row. So it's not actually going to create a dictionary item for the header row. It will start with the row after the header row, and it'll use the header rows as a key for all of the subsequent rows in the table. So we'll have it print what kind of thing the row is, and then have it print the row itself. And that row will then get appended to this table, which we're calling cartoon table. So cartoon table is going to be a list of dictionaries. After we have the list of dictionaries, then we'll ask about the item in row number one. What is that name and who do they work for and who their enemy is? Let's go ahead and run this. So the question of what kind of thing the object is, it is a dictator object. And then each one of the rows is of a type called ordered dictionary. We have not seen this data type before. An ordered dictionary is very similar to a regular dictionary, except that the items in it are in a particular order. For our purposes, there isn't any important difference between the dictionary that we're used to and an ordered dictionary. We can use them the same way we've been using regular dictionaries. And the, the special features that they have because they're ordered, we are not going to make use of. So here and here we see that there were only two rows of data read in, even though there were three rows in the table. And that's because the first row that got read in was used as the keys for each of the items here. It's not read in as the header row is not read in as a separate thing. Now, when I go through and ask about the uh, second item, which we can see the second item is this one here about Roadrunner. It says, Roadrunner works for Warner Brothers. Its enemy is Wiley Ethelbert Coyote. We can automatically step through each of the rows in a table now using this cartoon table list of dictionaries. And this is a very typical way of using a list of dictionaries. Um, in this case, we're showing what's in each row, but we could also check something against each row as well. So here I can see character name, Mickey Mouse, Company Disney, Nemesis Donald Duck, and so on. Again, I only step through two rows because a header row is being used for the keys. I can take uh, this sort of a process and turn it into template code for a CSV reading function that returns a list of dictionaries. This is similar to the function that we created for creating a list of lists. Uh, again, I have to choose how I'm going to specify the path. I'm just going to use my local uh, downloads directory, so I don't need to modify this. But if you're using Colab, you'll need to use the second line. So here we see this similar sort of code as what we had before, opening the file object and then passing it in as we create the dict reader object. Then we create an empty list. And just like we did with, with the creating list of lists, we step through the dictionary uh, dict reader object. But this time, each of the rows is an ordered dictionary instead of a list. So we are appending a dictionary as a new row, as a new item in our list of dictionaries. Once we've stepped through all the rows, we drop, out, drop back out to this level and close the file. And then we're ready to return the list of dictionaries as the output of the function. In our main script, then, we are going to ask the user to what the character is that they want to know about. 
And then we're using the same kind of little tricks that we used before. We use this flag here so that we can uh, produce an error message if the item is not on the list. And we can also um, use case insensitivity by making it be lower. So I'm going to run the script. Roadrunner doesn't like Wiley Ethelbert Coyote. Let's try it again. And here I can see that I only have to type in part of it and it gives me the same information. One of the limitations of this is if I ask about some other character, this one actually only really knows about two characters. By using the file that we created from this script up here, we are really very limited because in this script we had just hard coded the names of the items in this line right here. But it turns out that there is actually a CSV data file that I posted that has around 4,000 uh, characters in it. Well, there are a lot of rows here and about 4,000 and my computer is having trouble rendering them. So let's just skip to the chase and go ahead and download this data file. So I'm going to say save link as and the place that I want to save it to is my downloads directory. Now, the problem that I have here is it's thinking that I want to download it as text and not as a CSV file. So I'm going to change that to all files and then give the file extension CSV. When I say save, it asks me if I want to replace the existing one. So remember, the existing one is the one that I created that only has two characters. Also notice that this does have a name, a company, and a nemesis column, but it also has the Wikidata ID and universe column, but that's fine. It'll read those columns in and we can just ignore those. If I go back to my script and try running it again, now I can put in another character like Wilma, and it now knows that I'm talking about Wilma Flintstone because she's on the list. Let's try another one. How about uh, super? Whoa, doesn't know the uh, nemesis of a whole bunch of different things. So anything that has super in it basically is found. It does know that Lex Luthor is the nemesis of Superman. So this table uh, has a lot of missing information that you could you could add a lot of things in the nemesis column. But by being able to download a file, we are able to have a lot more information than we would probably want to create by ourselves.